point is be at the right place at the right time i cannot i cannot say this enough be at the right place at the right time when i was going to meet my husband i didn't know i was going to meet him obviously i was at the beginning of the year i was in a completely different country i wasn't even close or near him i wasn't even in the same state i was completely in a different country but i was already praying remember i was already praying asking god you know um you know what i wanted and how it would happen and i wanted god to continue to lead me and guide me just my prayers and when i got the idea of saying okay maybe i can move um here to this country it wasn't for marriage for me it was just for you know my residency to just start my residency program and just start to work you know as a medical doctor now that's that's why and uh, by all reasons you know the only place to come was actually here the other thing was i actually got another option you know to go to the us you know and you know um study and should i say um start residency there but if you're a medical doctor you already know that it's not that it's not that easy to do and um uh, more importantly the spirit of the law was not leading me in that direction at all when i got the notion uh, when the spirit of the lord led me to this country it was really quick it was really really fast two things number one if you're leaving my former residence my country of residence my former country of residence in the in our church they would always pray for you and they would always pray for you on a sunday they would pray for you on a sunday um they would people would take pictures with you like oh my god we're gonna miss you that kind of, it's a fellowship kind of setup it's a church but like most of the people there are like students so you would always have like pictures taken you know like we're gonna miss you they would send you off most of you are now like a worker or a worker in the, in the department or something i was a a, a worker in the, in the department in the, in the choir department so and i was also one of the um, long-standing leaders in the church i was uh, i was there for more than five years right so me leaving um it, it, would, it could have been on a Sunday where they would actually pray for me and send me off and stuff. Or maybe even the prayer department would even arrange, you know, get together for me. You know that kind of stuff where they would send you off with prayers and stuff. That did not happen for me because I was just telling people that I wasn't even sure when, when I was going. I, I was done and a um, few persons knew I was going to be leaving the country. But I didn't know when. I didn't know when either. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I was asking God for a specific thing as a confirmation to leave. But I didn't get it. So as at, let's say today is Sunday, for example, as at, or let's say two days ago was Sunday. As at two days ago, I, I, I didn't know that I was going, I was still going to leave the country. I was I left on a Wednesday. As at, as at Monday evening, Tuesday morning, I still didn't know I was going to leave. It was the Tuesday afternoon that I actually got the confirmation I wanted. And that was when I actually booked my flight. It was that Tuesday evening that we went for, to church and I actually stepped up and told my pastor that, okay, I was actually ready to leave now. I told him before, you know, that it's possible that I would leave, but I never, I never told, him, told him when. And that's because I knew I was going to leave at some point because God was already talking to me about it. But I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't know when, you know, the spirit of the Lord has not prompted me to say, oh yeah, it's time. Do you understand? So it was more like I was listening keenly for instructions and I followed that instruction to the latter. The moment, you know, I got my confirmation to leave, immediately I packed my bags. Immediately, that day was the day I went to send off my, my machine. I remember I have, I have a sewing machine where I wanted to send down here. In, that was in, the, the time I, I said, you know what, I'm sending this, it's, 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 it's going. And that's actually how it actually started. I remember my, my, um, my housemates then, um, um, who were like, they are going. They, it was so, it was so quick and fast. They had, it was such a short period of time, but they rolled with it because I had, the days before then, you didn't look like I was leaving or anything like that at all. But here what happened now. If I didn't leave at the time that I left, I wouldn't have met my husband at the time that I met him. And possibly by now, he would probably be with somebody else. So it basically boils to the fact that, or boils down to the fact that I wouldn't be married, or maybe married with somebody, the wrong person, and he would probably be married, and probably married with somebody else. True. only the message of god can actually correct those lines because if you're not at the right place at the right time it's like ruining two marriages so the two people that are supposed to actually be together will actually separate and be with se separate people so god needed me to leave my country of residence quick and fast i remember one of my big sisters um you know at my country of residence then i remember reaching out to her telling her that um you know i'm actually leaving the country you know tomorrow or maybe the day I, yeah it was actually the next day that i told her i was leaving like i was leaving the next day and i told her the day before 
and she was like eh you're leaving how and i was like um it's the leading of the holy spirit he was like she was more of like who do you know there where where are you going like who do you know what do you uh, how are you going i just told her i feel led to leave and i'm going to leave and that was and that was just that if you ask me again like did you have like a job here was there you know a place to live and stuff nothing did you have money to want to come here and stuff no 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 i had my god i had myself and i had backing of the holy spirit i packed my bags and i came and it was that same month and i'll tell you now because after many months of of being friends with my husband and then eventually getting into a relationship with him i remember he was telling me that that same month was the month where he was actually considering to see if he could you know start a, a relationship if i had missed him by that time i would have missed him for life so it's important to be obedient to god's words listen to instructions and follow it to the latter another thing is that following god's instruction to the latter means you will do it as in, as god has said it, in total nothing else when i got to this country i also had another opportunity to go to another neighboring town i said no i remember my father my father in the lord who is also my guardian saying i come now come over there now you know at least you have um you know there are people there who are also nigerians you know who are also like you know young like you you guys can roll together and stuff and these are people that i actually know so i could have gone there to say yeah i'm going there you know i have at least i will be familiar with i will have some familiar faces no the spirit of god did not lead me there and i said i wasn't going and i stayed in the city where i believe god was leading me to and that's actually where my met, i met my husband if i had gone to that even though i was in the country and i had gone to that city i probably wouldn't have met him and maybe if, if i would now meet him maybe later later when he's probably already married with somebody else or maybe in another relationship and that's how i would have missed him so it is important to be at the right place at the right time and that boils down to obedience listen to what god is saying listen to what god is laying in your heart listen to your you know maybe god speaks to you directly maybe it's true dreams maybe it's during prayers maybe it's what god leads in your spirit listen to it it might also be you know um you know your, your own prophet you are the first prophet of your life it might also be you might also get confirmation from men of god who are praying for you from people of god who are actually in place of prayer for you genuine people of god who are in place of prayer for you and so you're praying and they're also praying with you the the lord does not speak two things two different things on the same issue you speak one thing and that that one thing and even the bible says that where uh, in the mouth of uh, two or three is where you establish the truth i'm just paraphrasing but that's basically what that part of the bible says so if god is speaking into your heart and laying into your heart to get up and go somewhere or be somewhere at the time please be there and it's just it's just not this is not just marriage this is across like everything if god is giving you an instruction follow it it's for your own good the fourth point would be um be humble hmm. be humble be very very humble look don't be all high and mighty don't be proud when you get to a place don't get me wrong go there with all the poise and all the humor and all the you know elegance you know let the glory of the lord show on you let them see it but don't be proud about it you understand don't be proud about it look good dress well speak to people appropriately address people appropriately show respect and this is the reason why when god wants to elevate you he will look at your state of heart he will see that you are ready for it if you are proud, God will resist you. It's all, see, it's written, 
in the Bible from the beginning to the very end. God does not like the proud. He doesn't like anyone that feels pompous, that feels that they are high and mighty. So it may be that you know you are good, you are, you know, you you have you know something that brings you money, you're well to do, you know, you have your car, your house, your own house, even though you're still um possibly single and you know you can do well for yourself, you know, and you're saying you don't need no man, you don't need this, you don't need that. Look. That's for people who don't need a man. That's for people who are not interested in being married or anything. But if you are a child of God and you desire marriage, you desire the union between yourself and a woman or yourself and an, a, a, a man, a man that God has prepared for you or a woman that God has prepared for you, please be humble. Be humble. Men, coming away from that, men are attracted to you know someone who can carry themselves with great poise and you know elegance but without being proud there's a very thin line between it there's a way you speak there's a way you carry yourself with grace there's a way you behave that doesn't show that you are proud it just shows your elegance it just shows who you are in christ you understand and you you don't go about you know you know, saying, you know, I, I don't need no man. I, I, I'm good by myself. If, if, if somebody is like that, that's, that's them. That's what they desire. That's what they want. But if you're somebody that desire marriage, you know, you have to, you have to be humble in the presence of the Lord and the presence of man, so that God can what elevate you. God resists the proud. He doesn't, he doesn't like it. In fact, he doesn't like it. It also helps your prayers. To be answered if you're humble before god and you have hum you're humble in heart it's 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 us it helps god to, to to listen to you because god god loves you know the humble so he's ready to listen to you he wants to grant your heart desires so all those things you've been praying to god for he will definitely answer them for you also being humble prepares your heart if you have all of these stuffs at the chest at your chest at the top of your heart you're not even going to see the good one in front of you the good man that is in front of you you're not even going to see it because all you're carrying is like ah, and this and that they, they, they. no you have to be humble you have to bring yourself down you have to be humble in your heart when you're humble in your heart it will show your demeanor so even though you're carrying yourself with grace and elegance that humility still shows it still shows and it prepares your heart for what you're about to receive and I think that's um, that that I want to say about that the other the other thing that I also want to say uh, or the other the next point which is point number five is be respectful it also comes from a place of humility be very respectful the reason is because you might not meet you know your spouse immediately so okay God has said you know you, should, you have been praying god has been speaking into your heart you are at the right place at the right time you are humble but at one switch you just talk to anybody anyhow you just speak to people anyhow see that can cause a lot of problems and this is the reason why we are in the age of social media for example i've seen a lot of marriages these days a lot of um, engagement. If you follow, you know, Bella Niger, African weddings, and all these people, and you read stories of people who actually are married, are getting married, or people who who post their uh, engagement photo shoot pictures, they will tell you, oh, I met him through uh, a friend, or I met him at a party, or he slid into my DM, or I met him, you know, I, f I met his uncle first, or I met his parents first. If you were rude to the uncle. So let's say you met the uncle and you were rude, or you were rude to the sister, or the brother's cousin auntie, the one that was supposed to connect you to your husband or connect you to your wife, and you maybe the person poured drink or you by mistake, or the person, uh, uh, um, um, when, when you people met, you know, your body's touched all of a sudden, and you started shouting at the person, or you were, you just started saying awful things at the person. Can't you see? Eh? Don't you know that I'm passing here? Can't you see a lady? In the, all those things. Hmm. Hmm. That's how you will miss your husband though. Because there is no way that person would even want to introduce you to their own family member or their son or anything. In my case, for example, now I met his parents first. I didn't even know him. I didn't even know who he was. Hmm. I just met the parents. And 
you know, the way I was greeting them, I know they were like, oh, wow, this, that. And they, you know, by the help of God, they loved it. They, you could tell they loved it. They they loved someone that you know was very respectful, very warm, very welcoming, and that's that's how that's how people you know recommend people to say, you know what, I have a girl for you. Mm -mm. I got I got a girl for you, or you know what, I have a guy for you. Let me hook you guys up. You know, let me let me try and match make you. Maybe you guys can work. And that's how people recommend people. You know, and you hear that. She introduced me to him, or he introduced me to her, and the rest is history. Don't be rude. And this is where you hear, oh, I was introduced to to him by sister, so or he was introduced to me by you know my uncle's brother or my friend, or and you know being respectful goes a long way. Remember, first impression really really matters. So imagine if you already. Like I said, you prepare yourself, which is, I think, point number two. So you've prepared yourself. You already know how to carry yourself. You know how to talk. You know you know how to present yourself in public. You know you know how to look good. You know how to look elegant in your own way. You've prayed. You're at the right place at the right time. And, you know, you're just keeping to yourself. And then you just disrespect somebody. And the person you disrespect now happens to be your future husband's best friend or your future husband's, future husband's uncle or your future wife's sister it's not going to work that person will sh they will not even remember to recommend you to the person they will not even want you to meet the person and that's how you know somebody can miss that chance you will not miss it in jesus name i will not miss it in jesus name the last point which is a bonus point or should i say the sixth point is that don't rush God should I say that again don't rush God let God prepare you you may have been praying and praying for a while and go like oh, hey, I've been praying oh, when is this husband coming and I look at my age now yeah I'm almost 40 I'm almost 50 I'm almost 35 I'm almost 30. I'm almost this. Ah, when is this husband coming? Look, let me tell you. God knows what you want. In fact, he knows what you need. He knows what he knows what you desire and he knows what is best for you. And I'll tell you my a bit of Remember I said I I, I asked God for some specific things that I wanted a, a man that was tall and handsome and this and that. Great. Just a few months before I met my husband, I had another person in view who was also tall and handsome. But be careful of counterfeit blessings because God will give you, you know, what you need. You know, the person in the long run, you know, the man at the long run, not the short one, the one that will stay with you in your lowest time, the one that will love you through it all not a counterfeit blessing so you have to be very careful of that so you can't say oh i've been praying i've been praying i've been praying and then somebody just comes and say what yes that's the person hmm? let's go we are on the altar let's go i'm buying my dress i'm picking my wedding colors i'm calling my bridesmaid be careful don't rush god take your time let god walk through you let him do all the work that he has to do you see that blessing that came that is a counterfeit blessing if it's if it's not god's will it will go by itself it will it will move something will happen god will take it away from you because you are still praying you are still inquiring of the lord you are still you know in the presence of god always asking god always making sure that the steps that you're taking every day is leading to god's promises for you it also helps you to live in the will of God. So even though you've asked God for a tall and handsome man, for example, if the tall and handsome man is not in God's will for you, then now God will bring you somebody that is actually in his will for you. But if you rush it because of what you want, not basically what you need, you might miss it. Because for, for me, for, for me, for example, now, like I said, I wanted somebody tall, somebody handsome, somebody that was God fearing, somebody that loves God. This, this. What if that ideology in my head is not God's plans for me, and I happen to meet somebody that I, I felt was tall and handsome, and I just went with it? Ha! Huh, it's dangerous. 
so take your time so what i'm trying to say is that take your time let god walk through don't rush god let him do all the work let him perfect everything before you even say you know i do you know or you want you want to walk down the aisle let god do all the work it will clean every aspect it will make sure that it gives you what you need not necessarily what you like want you know you think it will if it will give you it will grant the desires of your heart it, but it will be in alignment with his will it will be in alignment with what god desires of you with what god wants you to have at the long run because he's the one that can see that marriage you know he's the one that can see that marriage before it even starts he can see it in the next two years 10 years 20 50 years he knows what things are that are going to happen and he knows who will stay for you he knows who will be there for you he knows he knows everything so let god finish the work and continue to pray don't, don't say because ah, god has said ah, god has, so now i just go ahead you must continue to pray and listen to the instruction you know of god of what god has to say from time to time from time until you know you get to that destination don't stop keep praying keep asking god and that's why it's important to have somebody who understands the principles of marriage who is also you know a born again christian like you who also has the ideologies that you have i think i'm going to make a separate video on that if you guys want me to make a separate video on what you should look for in a man or what you should look for in a woman the conversations you should have in you know before you get into place of marriage before you say okay i want to i want to go ahead in marriage with this person please join it in the comment section below let me know if you want that i can make a video um, for you guys about that of course because i'm here for you <laughs> so yes don't rush god let god finish his work let him perfect everything that concerns your marriage let the will of the lord come to pass don't be so rigid about it so don't say because i've asked god for somebody that is tall and handsome that has a tribal mark or doesn't have a tribal by force by fire this person he must be it and i'm going with this person what if that person is a counterfeit blessing what if that person is not the one that god asked for you maybe the person coming is coming he's coming he's on his way but the devil will bring you a flash a counterfeit blessing again ah that's the one yes i'm going with you go and start buying things he's gonna start shopping for wedding dress and, and and you start picking picking colors and at the end of the day may god not let us enter disaster so be careful don't rush god let god finish is work let him perfect all that concerns you and that would be all that i have to share with you today on how i met my husband i hope this video has blessed you i hope you've learned one or two things about this video um, about this conversation or this topic if you do have any other um, opinion suggestions additions subtractions please put it down in the comment um, section below please like this video and please share it to anyone that you feel may benefit from this video one way or the other thank you so much for joining me um, today on this platform if you have not subscribed to my channel you can do that um, right <laughs> right now um, i pray the lord will bless you and um, i will see you in my next video bye